The MKMOSCE exam has previously asked the candidate to demonstrate their competencies in adult airway skills. This has previously fallen under a couple of different guises. Firstly, explaining airway procedures to a medical student, and secondly, explaining airway procedures during a peri-arrest or arrest scenario. It is essential to remember that when faced with a table full of multiple pieces of airway equipment, not to feel pressurised to have to talk through all this equipment. It is often far more appropriate to ascertain a student's level of knowledge and then to pick an appropriate topic from there. This procedure video will revise the importance of assessing an airway, utilising appropriate airway manoeuvres, using appropriate airway adjuncts and then assessing when a definitive airway may be required. Take some time to familiarise yourself with all the equipment shown here. These are the likely things that you would be asked to demonstrate to a medical student and the things that you would be expected to be able to utilise in an arrest situation. Okay, so first of all I'm going to uh, approach the patient with, uh, with caution and uh, shake them. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Not really much response, so I'm just check the airway. First of all I'm going to have a look in the airway to see if I can see anything and I can't. So I'm just going to do a head tilt chin lift and assess the airway. And I'm looking, listening and feeling for 10 seconds to see if there is any sign of breathing. And there is some signs of breathing. So I'm going to keep the airway open and apply some supplemental oxygen. Ensuring that the airway is still open. Initially the airway was open and we put some oxygen on but now there seems to be some uh, noisy breathing so we need to think about other things that we can do to help the airway. One thing would be a jaw thrust. So if you hook your index fingers underneath the angle of the mandible and pull sharply forwards and that doesn't seem to help. So another option that we have is to use an adjunct such as a Goodell airway. And first of all we need to size this and we size this the way that it sits. So from the incisors to the angle of the mandible and you insert the airway backwards and then rotate it round. Okay, now that's worked, the noisy breathing has stopped, so for now we can reapply the oxygen mask. <clears throat> An alternative to the Goodell airway is the nasopharyngeal airway. This is not appropriate if there is signs of trauma around the nose or a suspicion of a basal skull fracture. Have a look at the, the nostrils and you choose the size according to what you think will fit best and that's usually a size 6 in a woman or a 7 in a man. Traditionally we would use the right nostril although it can be applied to either nostril. And you insert it going directly back not upwards and push it down into the nostril and again apply the oxygen. This generally is better tolerated than the Goodell airway. The patient appears to have stopped breathing so we are now going to need to ventilate the patient using a bag valve mask. It's possible to use a one person or two person technique. Ensure you have a good seal and that the airway is open. And ventilate it's important to ensure that you're getting ventilation by looking at the chest. Alternatively, you could get someone to listen. Now, ideally, in this situation, we would want to achieve a definitive airway. A step before an ET tube would be either using, we have here a laryngeal mask, which you hold like a pen, and really you just push it down to insert it until it sits comfortably 
We then need to inflate the cuff. Usually this causes the mask just to raise slightly out of the mouth. And then you ventilate again using the bag valve mask. The alternative to a laryngeal mask is an eye gel which is inserted in a very similar way. You don't need to inflate a cuff in the eye gel and one of the benefits is that it has a port at the side to allow the passage of an NG tube. And again, you can attach the bag valve mask.